I have to admit something. When I was getting into the whole business of religion years ago, I was impressed by the fact that Jesus could perform miracles. I like the fact that he could go and touch the people and they would be healed. And I thought, hmm, as a follower of Christ, I could do the same. I can get certain attention from people for doing that. You see, that oh, was in the back of my head. I want to be like Jesus. I want to heal people. So when the studies progressed, I realized that the gap between myself and people was getting bigger and bigger. There was this separation of me and others. Me and others. It wasn't not until later on, when I started having my internships in a few places and then got into the healthcare system as a chaplain that I noticed that it was not about miracles. My ministry wasn't performing miracles. It was simple fact of walking side by side with those who needed human touch. It was that simple. But it was a huge learning curve for me to get from where I was to where I am, or where, at least what I'm trying to be right now. It was about the fact that it's no more me and others, but we are together. In today's Gospel, we heard about leper, who was the other, leper who lived outside the community, leper who was pretty much kicked out of the life of regular people. I've read somewhere that lepers lived in the cemeteries. They were called living dead. They were called living dead. That was their place. They did not belong to the community. The community did not want them. So I can only imagine when Jesus comes and touches the leper, everything changes in his life. Everything changes in his life. His social, his personal, his religious status, all of a sudden it has a new meaning. He is made whole. Not that he wasn't whole before, but because of his sickness, he did not have a certain status in the society. He was pretty much excluded, abandoned. The only feelings he could feel were injustice, hate maybe, ignorance, lack of love. And that simple fact that Jesus touched him made him experience love again, made him experience hope again, made him experience compassion again. He belonged. Finally, he had a place to be. He had a place where he was appreciated. He was valued. It was a new, totally new world for him. But notice, in order for a leper to be brought back to the community, Jesus, for a while, had to exclude himself from what was the norm. From what was the norm. He had to enter into sick person's life. He had to enter and walk into his, in his shoes for a little bit, for a moment. Meaning society, community had to exclude Jesus for that moment. Because he did something that was not approved at a time. He touched a sick person. It didn't make Jesus sick, obviously, but he did something that was unheard of, something that was not approved, something that was not a norm. He had to enter into another human being's life that was excluded in order for that per person to be included. I don't know about you, 
But few times in my life, I felt like a leper. I felt like I was excluded. If it, were, if it wasn't because of your pastor today, if it wasn't because of Father Mark, I wouldn't be here. It was his gentle touch that invited me here. And now I feel like I have to repay with my maybe gentle touch sometimes. Some leprosies of our lives, like divorces, or being a certain sexual, sexual orientation, or being PTSD veteran, exclude us from the whole. Maybe our children brought us a shame at some point in our lives, so others pointed at us, calling us lepers, the others. And it wasn't until the moment that somebody came, somebody touched us, somebody made us feel special again, somebody told us that, no, you belong to this community. You're worth more than just being called a leper. As you are aware that I've been a priest for about five minutes, so I don't know much. These guys. Actually, it's three months. Oh, it's three months. That's my three-month anniversary today. But often, I enter into something that's unknown to myself. Often, I feel like a leper, like the other. If you ever wonder what I do on Sundays that I'm not here, well, I say mass, masses in Chicago. It's an interesting setting. It's in the little village. Debbie and, and, and uh, Paul know what the little village is. It's an area in Chicago where about 75% of people are undocumented immigrants, mostly from South America. So as you can imagine, my masses are in Spanish. A white guy, okay, a Polish white guy, with a green card, okay, saying masses in the very foreign place. So it's not like the people are lepers to me, it's more like I am a leper. I walk into their lives. I am excluded sometimes, but I try to make myself included. I want to touch their lives, but I notice that often they touch my life with their life stories, with what's going on with their families. It's not so much that I feel better or worse of who I am. I realize more and more that we are all lepers. We all have our sicknesses. We all have our things that at some point of our lives excluded us from the others. What a big deal, huh? Because we found somebody that actually touched us, touched our stories, touched our sicknesses, somebody who brought us back to Jesus, somebody who brought us back to community. Yesterday, Otis uh, Woodward died. Woodward, I, I don't know. I never know how to pronounce it. Otis died. You know Otis. He was in this church. A man in the, with colorful clothes. Man who does the outreach in St. Louis. Man who touched the lives of thousands of people through his life. But guess what? Through his outreach, all of you touched other people's lives. I was privileged this year with Donna and, and Zach. I was privileged to deliver gifts that you offered to his outreach. It was my privilege to, to take two SUVs and we dropped off the gifts. It was you who touched other people's lives. And if you were there, if you, if you know a Peace Park, you know how it looks. You know, a few two by sixes, plywood, big old sign. Please take whatever you can. You should see the faces of those children when we were there. 
Mom's asking for blankets. Nothing else. Standing there with the little cart, is there a warm blanket, blanket I, have, I can have this winter? It's you who changed other people's lives. They're no lepers anymore. They're healed because of you. That was my first and last time I saw Otis. You know how he changed my life? He said three words to me. I love you. He didn't know who I was. He had no clue. Some guy, you know, showed up wearing clerics, deliver gifts, one of probably one of many. He said, I love you. Valentine's Day is a great weekend to be reminded of that love. Love is the force that moves us forward. We do all those crazy things. We do our crazy outreach, our crazy social justice, our LGBTQ, whatever letters you want to add there. We march. We protest. You know, disenfranchised people, immigrants. We do all those crazy things because of our call. As Christians, we call to do so. I never met anybody who does social justice, who delivers Christmas gifts to poor black families, who feeds the homeless and hungry, who gives them coats or warm shoes. I never heard somebody call them bad people. No, we do call them crazy on the occasion because it takes a crazy to do to talk the talk and walk the walk with the homeless and hungry. But well, we're never called bad. Today, we are reminded that simple touch can change another person's life. Simple touch can make a person whole and bring, it back, bring him back to the community especially this community. We know a lot about that. We gather here every Sunday. Every Sunday we do pretty much the same thing. But look at the outcome. God that comes to us in a simple bread and wine touches our lives, touches our hearts. The same God sends us out to touch other people's lives. That's simple. And I know that when we touch other people's lives, our meals taste different, our clothes look different, our lives change. It's a learning curve for all of us. Every day we learn something new about ourselves, how we can be better in serving others, how we are dedicated to serve others those who are on the margins of the society, on the margins of the city, those who maybe need to be reminded that they are still loved. Because love is the force that's behind everything that we do.